In this video, I'm going to show you how we can record your acoustic guitar with GarageBand. Uh, I'm going to show you some very basic options and then some higher level options um, for those of you that want to do more with this skill. We're going to be multi-tracking and we're going to be doing loads of cool stuff. Um, but first of all, why have I chosen this guitar? Well, that's for two reasons. One, I've changed the strings on this one most recently. I changed them um, about a week ago. So they're pretty optimal for recording. They're going to sound really good. If your strings are more than, I don't know, a couple of months old, they're going to sound more dead. If you've changed them that day, your guitar will probably go out of tune more. Um, but also, this guitar has um, a pickup system and also a microphone inside it already, which are both accessed by uh, the jack lead. So I'm going to plug this jack lead in now which goes directly into my Focusrite um, audio interface and I can adjust different things on the guitar but I've got this set up so that it records well because obviously I film and record with this quite often. We're also going to be using a microphone but uh, initially we're not going to use them together, we're going to compare them separately and then compare them together as well because there can be um, some good sounds that we can make with that for sure. Um, First things first, when we're recording acoustic guitar, there is nothing that's going to top a good microphone recording. The pickup system is always going to sound worse than that. The advantage of doing it this way, with having your guitar plugged in via a jack cable, is it's just a guaranteed, this is what's always done live, and it's just a guaranteed way to get that sound recorded you don't even have to use headphones if you're doing it this way. It's more similar to what I've done in a previous video where we did the recording electric guitar straight into your computer. So we can plug it straight in. You don't have to worry about that excess noise. With microphones, we do have an added faff. I've needed to get a mic stand. I've needed to get this microphone with a shock mount. This is a Red 5 audio microphone. This is a type of microphone that needs a shock mount with it because this is a capacitor uh, style microphone rather than a dynamic microphone. Um, again, we're suddenly getting into different territory rather than just plugging your guitar in and recording. But the difference is that's always going to sound better than plugged in. That being said, I often do plug in my guitar when I'm doing guitar tutorials, I want, to sound, I want it to sound great because I know that's always just going to capture the guitar. This microphone could have noise on it, there could be different things and I might not be you know, aware of that. To make me aware of that, I'm going to be using headphones for the first time um, in the series that this video is a part of because uh, I want to make sure what I'm recording from that microphone sounds good and also when I'm layering sounds or playing along to backing tracks with a microphone, I need to wear headphones. And you don't have to wear headphones if you're just plugged in. So that being said, let's just make a start and make a project in GarageBand and get started. So this is a new project. Uh, let's start off by doing it the simple way with doing the same thing we did with the electric guitar and selecting the guitar I'm plugged into input one. I'm using that same cable I did for the uh, electric guitar. Because it's currently set to the default, it's on electric guitar settings. However, if we go back to here, and I'll show you what I did there, because this is the big bit. Previously, we've only used the electric guitar settings in, the, in this video series. If I go back one, we suddenly have access to voice and acoustic guitar presets. And if I click them, Let's just go for natural strum. You can see suddenly the icon's acoustic guitar. We're on the acoustic guitar appropriate settings right away. To reiterate, GarageBand is phenomenally plug and play. It does a lot of the work for you. You do need to double check you're on the right settings. I'm gonna have to adjust the input here, I imagine. The gain is pretty low there because we're um, now we've plugged in a different guitar, and it's an acoustic guitar. The first one I plugged in was electric. That's looking pretty good. Let me just press record and just take a look at the signal level. So it's a little bit quiet. And I, I can tell that. I'm going to turn the metronome off. Didn't notice that was on. Mm. 
we can go up a tiny bit, but I wouldn't go up more than that. And that is me just playing way louder than I'm going to play, but straight away you can notice there it did, it did clip. And let me show you this, because this is going to happen for you guys when you're first trying it out. When I was playing stupid loud then, it got to the, the waveform, the audio waveform got to towards the outside rim, which means it's going to be peaking. So I'm just going to take it back down 3 dB as a precaution, but really I'm going to be playing at this level. But if I now record again and I just play really quiet or I did some kind of finger style stuff... You can't even see it is that quiet. But if I keep recording on a strum... I would say acoustic guitar is the most transient instrument, which means we're going to have more, more, <laughs> more transients, more, more peaks and troughs in our waveform. Um, and if we go from strumming to playing quietly in fingerstyle, you're probably going to have to adjust the gain on it. And we don't have that huge safety net of the amount of electric guitar processing that we can do um, when we just record an electric guitar direct in. Acoustic guitar, we've got to be aware of that gain. We need to use the gain on your audio interface to get it right. But before we do any more than this, let me just do a take of the acoustic guitar plugged in compared to the microphone. I'm going to use headphones to this so that I can do it to a click, which would be encouraged, not essential, but encouraged. I've got one headphone slightly off so I can still hear the guitar so that I don't need the guitar in the headphones at least as much. Press record. No need to start straight away. I'm going to keep counting in my headphones. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so that's with the direct in. Now I'm going to make another track, not with duplicate settings, not with the same settings. I'm going to use the microphone. And then I'm going to record exactly the same thing just using this microphone. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now we can see they look pretty much the same. Let's compare these two. So I'm going to now solo take one. Let's take the click off as well. So there's a quality to that, which I think really stands out when we compare it to the microphone. That is an unprocessed sound which that microphone is picking up. And it sounds good, it's workable. It would sound better if we processed it, but the quality of that sound is better than it is with this one. That is brighter, but the, it's the fidelity of the microphone. There's, more, there's a more natural quality to it, and we can process that in various ways. Importantly, if we now listen to both of those together, it will sound like there is two guitars because we have multi-tracked them. Let's have a listen. And we can hear it even more clear if I have one of them left and the other one right. Let's listen to that one more time. If you have headphones, very good to compare and then have them together. Headphones really show a stereo feel much better than speakers do because the headphones are here surrounding your entire ears and speakers are in front of you. So if you pan everything left, they move from there to there. So if you want to hear that effectively, listen on headphones. Um, but we can hear there's two different guitars there. So what we could do totally instead, let's just do it from here to keep everything that we've done so far. 
Uh, because I have the focus right audio interface, I can record both this source and this source at the same time, but I need to click one button. I need to go right click on a track, any track first of all, configure track header, record enable. Because at the moment, what's ha what GarageBand is doing for you is moving between recording this track when it's selected to another track when that one's selected. That's the, that's the preset that's already enabled. If I want to do both at the same time, or if I want to strum and sing, perhaps this microphone's going to be here and I could sing through it, we need to click that record button and that record button on both of these tracks. Um, let's keep them pan left and right because we can compare that. Press record and in my own time, we're going to do the same thing again, which this song is actually uh, my own song. I wrote this, it's called Hometown. I think that's a very decent, quick and easy setup of how to record an acoustic guitar. When we do it along to a click like I've done here, we can add more to that and we'll be looking at more of how to do that in the next video in this series.